All right. Hi, I'm Henry, co-founder of Streamer. Welcome to this 15-minute talk, during which you'll learn what the heck are data unions and how you can start one yourself. So sit back, make yourself comfortable, and let's get started. So first of all, what is a data union? It's a framework for building applications that pay users for sharing valuable data. It's an implementation of a data crowd selling pattern. For builders such as yourselves, it's a potential business or perhaps a way to liberate data from centralized monopolies. And from users' point of view, it's a way to earn by providing data. To give a concrete example, I'll show a ready-made data union called Swash. And afterwards, I'll show how you can build a data union too. So one day, late last year, when the data unions framework became available in private beta, a team shows up in the streamer community with an idea. They applied for a grant from the streamer community fund and built Swash. Swash is a browser plugin that shares and sells your web behavior data anonymously and in real time. Most applications collect and sell user data secretly on the side, but this is the opposite. Its sole purpose is to collect data in a fully transparent, fair, and configurable way. We can see here I've earned 74 streamer data tokens so far, which is around four bucks. With the plugin active, if I, for example, do a search on Google, the plugin produces data points on what I searched for and which results I clicked on. I can fully inspect the contents of all data before it gets sent, and there's an endless amount of privacy settings which I can tweak to something I'm personally comfortable with. With enough users participating, this kind of data would be interesting to web analytics companies, uh, retailers for analyzing their competition, and well, maybe even crypto speculators to see what projects are getting attention right now. Of course, there are many kinds of data that can be shared and sold, from people using digital services to IoT and environmental sensing, such as weather or pollution data. Broadly speaking, there are two categories of end-user apps. There's Dedicated apps like Swash, where data sharing is the main feature of the app. Um, but the data union features can also be added on top of existing apps as a sort of side benefit. For example, imagine a Fitbit data union where the framework would be part of the Fitbit app and give the users the option to share and monetize their wellness data. Data unions are built on two main technologies. Of course, Ethereum, where smart contracts are used for storing and transferring value, as well as maintaining the data union state and doing all kinds of bookkeeping. Then there's the streamer network, which is a decentralized pub-sub message broker for actually transporting the data from the crowd of data producers to the consumers uh, or buyers of that data. Additionally, there's the Streamer Core web app that provides a friendly interface for setting up and managing things and a marketplace where access to data streams is sold to interested buyers. What basically happens is that data providers interact with the end user application, which is data union specific, like Swash, for example, and the rest of the components are part of the framework. The application pushes individual data points to the streamer network. Buyers interact with um, the marketplace dApp where they can purchase access to the data content and afterwards start receiving it via the streamer network. The payment goes to the data union smart contract which keeps a record of each user's cumulative earnings and allows the tokens to be withdrawn. The data union admin can set a fee, which is a way for getting compensated for developing and maintaining the app and potentially making a business out of it. 
the admin is usually the party who created the end user app, but could also be, for example, a DAO consisting of the data union members. This talk is more about how to use the framework than the details of how it works under the hood, so I won't go too deep into it, but perhaps worth drilling down for a quick look into the Ethereum side of things. Um, one thing important to understand is that currently data unions can't run fully on mainnet due to high costs and lack of scalability. And there's two ways in which we've solved this. The currently, on, uh, currently in use 1.0 version maintains the data union state of chain and uses an operator slash validator model um, and has a plasma-like interface for withdrawals, which means users can withdraw by presenting a Merkle proof of their earnings to the mainnet smart contract. Now in 2.0, coming out later this year, the data union state is fully on chain with the parts that need scalability in a proof of authority sidechain run together by all the admins of the different data unions and the token bridge built by the POA network guys bridging between the chains. Now, this should improve both usability as well as security of the system. So, but how do you actually use this? So, there's basically four steps to creating a new data union. First, you set up your streams, then you deploy the data union smart contract. The most involved part is integrating the actual end user application, which is usually the data source and also acts as a wallet. And finally, you publish your data union as a product on the marketplace to start selling the data and earning revenue. So first you need to figure out how to model your data into streams. Streams are sequences of messages. So you need to decide which events go into which streams. A typical approach is the firehose, where a certain type of data uh, from all users goes into the same stream. In Swash, for example, all web searches uh, go into one stream and you know, YouTube behavior goes into another. Then you simply use the core UI to create the streams you need. You basically give them a name and hit create, um, so easy enough so far. Okay, now our streams are created, but they remain empty until we start sending data into them in step three. First, however, we create the data union itself. So also using the core UI, we go to create new product and choose the type data union instead of the basic one, which um, is used for B2B data sales usually. Now we give our data union a name, a cover image, a description and whatnot. And in particular, we bind the streams we created in step one to this product. So we're saying these streams contain the data for this data union. Then we set a price per time unit for subscribing to the data. For example, one USD per hour. The price can be defined in data tokens or pegged to USD. And finally, we set the admin fee, which is your percentage share as the admin for creating and maintaining the thing and the rest of the revenue gets automatically distributed to the users. Okay, now we're ready to deploy the data union to the blockchain, and for this we need a mainnet transaction. The deploying address becomes the admin address for the data union. Cool, now our data union exists, so we can start integrating the end user app, which allows people to join the data union and send data into the streams. So to do the integration, we'll be using the streamer SDK for JavaScript, which provides easy to use wrappers for everything we need, including the data unions functionality, as well as publishing data to the streamer network. When your app starts for the first time, it should generate an Ethereum private key and store it locally. The key will be used to sign withdrawal transactions, for example, as well as to sign the data that gets sent to the streamer network. 
before you interact with the system, uh, you create an instance of the streamer client object and pass it the private key. Also part of the initial setup, you call a method join data union to have the user join the data union. You only need to do this once. This calls the default gatekeeping service that validates a secret that should only be known by your app. Now you can replace the simple default gatekeeping with your own, uh, for example to include a CAPTCHA to uh, defend against bots or, or something like that. Okay, now that the user has joined the data union as a member, we can start actually publishing data points to the streams by calling streamer.publish with the actual data payloads, whatever they are in your use case. Since the end user app acts as a wallet, you probably want to display the user's balance and earnings somewhere in your app. Uh, and you can easily query those with the get member stats function. Members accumulate earnings for as long as they want and they can withdraw them from the smart contract at any time. The tricky bit is that the withdrawal, of course, requires a mainnet transaction. So the user needs to have ETH in their address to pay gas, which is tricky from a UX point of view. Now for better usability, there's another function that allows the data union admin to sponsor the withdrawal by paying uh, for the gas. They might cover it from the admin fee, for example. Um, need to be said though that with the current you know, through the roof gas prices, users need to accumulate a fair bit of value before they can even cover uh, withdrawal costs. But obviously the current gas price situation on Ethereum will eventually be solved one way or another. Uh, I hope. Anyway, uh, that's it. Our app is now fully integrated to the framework, including initial setup, joining, data production, and withdrawals. The final bit is to publish the data union as a product on the marketplace. So to do that, you go back to the core app and hit the publish button on your data union product and do another mainnet transaction. This makes your data union publicly visible and the data streams are now on sale. The public product listing shows stats about the product, such as you know, member count and total earnings. People can now unlock access to the data by purchasing a subscription for a time period of their choosing. So that's it, we're all done with creating the data union. One thing though, as the admin, your job is to create supply and demand by marketing your app to users, as well as finding buyers for the data. You should also keep your data union tidy. Um, and there's some supporting tooling available to, for example, kick out members who are no longer producing data. The framework is currently in public beta, so you can just go and start building. The best place to start is the docs, which you can find under the project website at streamer.network. And there's also a bunch of screencast tutorials coming soon. All right, um, that's the end. Thanks for joining this session, keep building and stay safe.